Hey everybody, Brian here with BPS Customs and today's video um, I wanted to do uh, in order to talk about benchmarking. Uh, now if, you're, if you've been building computers for a while or involved in any kind of uh, you know uh, systems integration or um, testing in any way really you've probably heard of benchmarking. Um, but the novice PC builder, the person that's new to PCs, maybe somebody even coming from consoles or something like that, may not be familiar with this process. So what I want to talk about today is what benchmarking is, how do we do it, and why it matters. Now, benchmarking is very similar to uh, basically any other scientific test. Scientific tests uh, in order to be valid, need to be verifiable and they need to be repeatable. Uh, and the reason for that is that you need to be able to say, this is my result with this test, this is what it means, let me demonstrate it. Uh, if you get a, an outlying result um, and cannot repeat it, that result is not valid. Uh, that's one of the reasons why uh, I choose the benchmarks that I choose, and I'll get into that in a minute. But Benchmarking basically is a way to, um, to monitor your system performance and to make sure that everything is functioning the way it should be. Now benchmarking doesn't only compare your system to other systems, but it compares your system to itself. Uh, you want to be able to make sure that the system that you've put together is performing in a way that is consistent with the components that you've chosen. Um, a lot of times, you know, you can run into an issue where your CPU isn't performing right or you're running into some kind of, kind of thermal issue, some kind of throttling somewhere along the chain where you're going to get results that will indicate that there is a problem because you won't be able to say these results line up with other results with similar hardware. Uh, so benchmarking serves a couple different purposes. It's also kind of fun when you see if you could beat yourself if you're overclocking or or anything along those lines, you know, see how high of a score you could get. It's certainly something that people really, really get into. And there are competitions for, uh, you know, overclocking based on, you know, using liquid nitrogen and things of that nature to see who could get the highest scores and who could push the chips the hardest. That's not really what we're concerned with right now. Now, the test that I use when I benchmark, um, there are five separate tests and they each have their own purpose. Uh, the tests I use are Cinebench R15, uh, Firestrike, uh, Valley Benchmark, and then I run the benchmark, the integrated benchmarks with Metro Last Light and Grand Theft Auto V. I will add on to this video and show exactly why I've chosen each of those benchmarks. But basically, the the reason why that um, these benchmarks are the ones that I've specifically said these are the ones that I want to use with each one of my systems it comes back to science. Is this test verifiable and repeatable? Now um, each one of these tests is uh, structured so that you can repeat it. There are other ways to benchmark. You could use uh, games like Crisis 3 is a very popular one um, and think you know Witcher 3 things of that nature where you run through basically the same scene and um, in the same pattern in approximately the same time and you get a result. Now these results are for the most part accurate. Um, they give you general, a general idea of how your system is performing um, but they're not extremely repeatable. You're always going to run into some variables that are going to make the test even a slight amount different than the way it was run before. And for this reason, I've chosen uh, tests that I could repeat exactly the same way each time. Now, Cinebench, uh, Firestrike, and uh, Valley Benchmark are all what's called synthetic benchmarks. They are generated uh, by software to be exactly the same each time. Um, it's, uh, in comparison, you have uh, real-world benchmarks like Metro and like GTA 5 which are derived from the game engines themselves. Um, the, the synthetic benchmarks measure a specific thing in your system. Cinebench measures CPU performance, specifically multi-threaded performance. Uh, Firestrike measures total system performance because it, it has physics tests which stress the CPU. It has 
uh, graphics tests, which stress the GPU, and it has combined tests, which stress, uh, stress both. Uh, Valley Benchmark is very much in the vein of um, a non-synthetic test test that has been put together in a synthetic way. Um, it runs like a game. It looks like a game. It's it's basically flying through um, some scenery in the mountains, and you know it, it looks like a game would render on your machine. But obviously, it's not a game. It's meant to um, it's meant to stress your GPU. Now, Metro Last Light is a first-person shooter. Um, this benchmark that uh, that runs during Metro is made to stress your GPU in a way that would be similar to what you'd see in any first-person shooter. Even though the game came out a couple years ago, the, the benchmark is actually still extremely demanding, and uh, for that reason, uh, it is something that I continue to use. Now, Grand Theft Auto V is completely different. It is a real-world game. It simulates uh, actual gameplay, but because it's an open-world title and not, say, a first-person shooter or even like a driving game uh, itself, what it does is actually puts a lot of load on your CPU while your GPU is also rendering um, because it has to render such a large open world, especially if you crank up shadow detail and shadow draw distance. Um, it really makes it so that every part of your system is being stressed, but it does it in a way that the actual game would stress it. So we have five different tests um, that each stress a different part of your system in a different way. Now, um, you know, I, I don't think that this is the only way to do it. Uh, there are certainly other tests that can be run. There are many synthetic benchmarks that are available. Uh, things like Asus RealBench is actually a very good one. Um, the uh, uh, programs like uh, stress, stressing programs like uh, Ida64 actually has a built in benchmark, and Furmark has a built in benchmark. Um, these are these are fine options. Uh, the problem is once you go down the rabbit hole of benchmarking, you don't want to have to include 17 different tests in order to get your results. You want to have a representative sample of what you think the machine's going to be doing, and you want to take those results and compare it to other machines that are doing the same thing. You don't need to run every benchmark out there in order to get numbers because they won't change all that much. So after making the first part of this video uh, and recording some examples of benchmarking using my test bench and some lower end hardware I really decided that I just wanted to record uh, my main system uh, running some of these tests just to give you an example of how they run and what they look like. Uh, so this is Cinebench, this is Cinebench R15 uh, and as you can see Cinebench actually has uh, several different benchmarks you could run. It has the OpenGL which is a graphics test it has the CPU, which is uh, multi-threaded, and it has sing CPU single core, which is obviously single core performance. Uh, now, I don't use the OpenGL test with Cinebench. Uh, I find it to be um, not really that stressful um, uh, on your system, and you get really high scores with almost any card. Uh, but the CPU test, the multi-threaded CPU test, is definitely taxing, and uh, here it is. So as you can see, um, each core of your CPU is actually represented by one of those little squares running around the screen. Um, the squares are each rendering a portion of this 3D image that eventually forms a picture. Um, now with um, machines with less cores or lower speed, these boxes are going to, first of all, there's gonna be less boxes, and also you're gonna have them moving a lot slower as they render the image. Uh, but the faster the image renders, the better your score. And as you can see, um, hopefully I'm going to move this a little bit closer here. Um, this is my uh, 5820K, um, and I got a score of 1325. Now the score doesn't really mean anything in particular, but you can compare it to other systems. This is the Metro Last Light benchmark. Uh, as you can see, it opens up in a little box, and you get to actually choose how exactly you'd like it to run. I'm going to get a little bit closer here and focus. There we go. And you can see all the different parameters you could change. You could change the resolution, the quality, anti-aliasing, texture filtering, motion blur, tessellation, v-sync, and advanced physics. So what I'm going to do right now is this is running on my main system. Um, I have two 980 Ti's in here, 
uh, and I'm gonna run it at pretty beefy settings. I'm gonna run this at 4K uh, with very high quality, um, with very high tessellation, motion blur. Um, that, that, that looks good. Uh, and you could change the amount of times you want the benchmark to run to get a more representative average score. Um, but just for time's sake, I'm gonna run it once. Um, and we're gonna take a look at how that looks. All right, so the benchmark is starting up. All right, so as you can see up in the upper left corner, you get uh, frames per second readout, uh, time, the number of frames that you're on, and what run you are, because remember, like I said, you can run this more than once. <clears throat> So as you can see, the game is actually rendering a scene, which would be, you know, it's not exactly what you'd see in the game, but it's very similar to, uh, to something that may show up um, in actual gameplay. All right, so as you can see, the benchmark is now done. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a page that shows you a graph of your uh, frame rate over time. Uh, it also will show you your total frames rendered, the time that it took, and your average frame rate. You can see 76.21 is what I got for this test. Now my, uh, my graphics cards are actually clocked down a little bit from what they have been in the past, but still 76.21, great result at 4K. Uh, but that was the Metro Benchmark, and uh, now we're going to move on to Valley. Okay, so this is Valley Benchmark. Uh, this is how the uh, the program opens up, opens up in a little window. Uh, I apologize for the um, the smallness of this. It doesn't apparently this window doesn't scale very well. Um, but on the right here, you could see that there are a bunch of presets. Uh, you have your language preset, your, uh, this, this is actually a, a choice that says preset, which is low, medium, high, custom. Your API, which right now is still DirectX 11. Quality right now set to ultra. Uh, and things, uh, other things in that nature, stereo 3D, number of monitors, anti-aliasing, full screen, and resolution. Uh, right now I have this set on ultra settings at what's called system resolution. So this will run at whatever your system normally runs at. Uh, my system runs at uh, 4K. So this is Valley Benchmark at 4K on ultra settings. Let me back this off here, get the whole screen. Uh, you hit run and uh, pop up this loading screen. And then we're in. So right now it's actually just rendering the scene. Uh, this is not the benchmark itself running, um, but uh, this is what the, uh, the benchmark does look like. Um, up in the top right hand corner, um, if this would focus, you see the, uh, the frame counter uh, and you see your information on, some, on your GPUs, which is the type, the number, the, uh, the frequency you're running at, your memory frequency, and the temperature. Um, and then in the upper left corner of the screen, I paused it, I didn't mean to pause it. Uh, you have your, um, your options to start the benchmark you have, uh, you could change the camera angle, you could change the settings, quality, the sound, or you can quit. So what we're gonna do right now is just quickly run this benchmark and show you how it looks. So you could see it says benchmarking, so you know that the benchmark is actually running. Um, and then it runs through, um, it runs through 18 different scenes, um, all in this same kind of mountainous valley-ish setting. Um, hence the name, I suppose. Uh, and while it's doing that, it has added another um, uh, another display, another readout to the bottom right corner of the screen, which is your average frames per second, the time, uh, the number of frames, your minimum, your maximum, and what scene it's on. Uh, so right now you can see it's on scene four of 18, going to five of 18. And like I said, it runs through all 18, and then you come up with a number, um, which calculates a score. So we're gonna fast forward here.
Okay, so the test is done and it gives you a score, uh, gives you a readout of your average frames per second and it assigns a score to your system. Um, I don't know what the score is based on. This is actually really low for what I normally am getting, but like I said, I actually did back the overclock off on my cards. So 84.8 um, uh, ultra settings at 4K, still pretty respectable. All right, so this is Firestrike. Uh, now I have Firestrike through the Steam store. I believe there are other ways to get it, but this is kind of the easiest. Steam actually was having a sale on this. A little while ago, I got this whole program for like five bucks. Uh, but when you open up um, Firestrike, you're greeted with a bunch of options. Now, um, the options basically correspond to resolutions that you're running at. The top, Firestrike Ultra is a 4K test. Firestrike Extreme, is a 1440p test and fire strike is the 1080p test now the test below skydiver cloudgate ice storm um, these are all for um, older systems um, these are not what you generally want to be using uh, unless your system specs are very low um, you want to if you're going to be gaming at 1080p what you want to run is this test right here this is fire strike this is the baseline test a lot of people use this test um, these numbers are, are, are compared across the internet quite a bit. Um, but what you do is, I always uncheck include demo because the demo just takes forever and it actually does nothing. Um, so I uncheck that and then you hit run. So it collects your system information. It slowly collects your system information apparently. And, oh, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna back this off so we can see. And it loads this scene. Um, it loads uh, four separate scenes. The first two are GPU scenes. The third one is a CPU scene, it's a physics test. And the fourth one is a combined test that stresses everything. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through here and uh, see you on the other side. Well, that's interesting. I don't know if you saw that. I had an interesting error pop up. And, uh, okay, well, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll address that later. But uh, looks like the display driver crashed. That is, uh, that's, that's a thing, I suppose, that happens. This is one of the reasons why you stress test the system, to make sure this kind of stuff doesn't happen. But this is a new driver from NVIDIA that just downloaded the other day. Um, so I wonder if something's messed up. So, but in any event, you kind of get the idea. Um, it comes out with a score. Um, actually, it loads, see, it loads the screen. Uh, right now, it's not going to have a score because it's probably receiving uh, your result because I didn't finish the test. Um, but I have scores. Maybe I have some over here. Let me see if I can dig up a score. Aha, I found it. Um, so this is what the score looks like when you get it back. Uh, as you can see, it tells you what your system is, what you know, you have two 980 Ti's, um, what your processor is, the 5820K, and then it gives you a score. Okay, so this is the GTA 5 benchmark. It was recorded on my test bench uh, using the G4400 and a 750Ti, and I actually didn't record any voiceover for this, so this is being done separately, and I don't have a score display. Uh, but this is what the GTA 5 test looks like, and it gives you uh, a text file at the end with your average frame rate, minimum frame rate, uh, and all that good information. So basically, uh, that's benchmarking. Um, uh, you know, I've showed you examples of each benchmarking test, what it looks like, how it runs. Uh, unfortunately, I did have the examples running on a 750Ti and a G4400, so the results aren't going to be all that strong, the ones that you're seeing anyway. Uh, but upcoming videos are going to involve a um, couple more NVIDIA cards. Uh, I have this 970 uh, that I want to compare to uh, some of the older generation cards like this one, which is the 780, and this one, which is the 770. And I want to see if um, the last generation NVIDIA cards actually can keep up with the 970 and other more current hardware. Um, but those results are coming up in a separate video, so get subscribed and um, uh, follow me on Twitter 
and uh, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.